mind blowing. Like genuinely like, I think people's jaws are gonna fucking hit the floor on that one. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Into the Geekverse. We are back from San Diego Comic Con. Phil, right. did you have a great time? Yes, I did. I'm Best year glad yet. To be home now. Same man. It was nice that that bed though at the Airbnb. I know. I'm jealous. I gotta figure it out. Do you, do you miss the bed? <laughs> I do. Did <laughs> you sleep like, good when you came back? Dude, I, actually, no. <laughs> no, seriously? Yeah, I, I struggled with sleep. So that bed was so comfy. I should it, have just stole the mattress or something. <laughs> you said you wanted to pay her for it. I know. It was so good. So no, we're back from San Diego Comic Con and it was a, it was a blast. Mm -hmm. um, I think to say the least, we did a lot of coverage. Uh, if you've been on Spotify, obviously you've seen a lot of our audio stuff, but also on YouTube we posted extra content as well, uh, such as like Deadpool and Wolverine, the mm -hmm. celebration panel, um, some f small fun shorts like the Hulu Anime Ham walkthrough. But we're back. We took a week off. <laughs> we definitely needed that recharge. Yeah. And I think we're even more excited to jump into everything now in in the Geekverse, you know? Yeah. So yeah. with that said, man, let's let's just shoot the shit. Like, how's your week been? I know you've been saying that you've been playing, like, a lot of different things. Uh, one of them we're going to talk about today, which is Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Um, That's right. Path of Exiles you've also been playing. Yep. I am super new to that, and I've been on that grind. It is... It's scary yeah. how big that game is. I'm, I'm low-key really scared for when the second one comes out for you. Like, am I am I even going to be able to see you? I'm thinking about putting a couple days off. Why don't you? If you I like, I think we need to, like, warrant and bring to life more of that. It's okay to take a day off if you have the vacation or even the sick yeah. time. If you have that time to take off and you want to enjoy a video game, do it. Mm -hmm. It's a day to yourself to relax. I usually do it every single year at least once or twice, I'll choose one game or two games, depending on how much vacation time I have left. And that'll be like my three days to myself. So last year it was a uh, Spider-Man two was the day I took, or I took off Spider-Man two and I took Starfield off, but I had like other things to do around Starfield. So it wasn't just me sitting there mm -hmm. was Phantom paint, Phantom Liberty also last year. I thought it was this year, wasn't it? It wasn't this no. year. No, if it was last year, then I also took time off for that too. So yeah. Starfield, I had like a couple days off because we had just moved. So I was like able to just like play it in between Phantom Liberty. I remember I did take off like two days for that. And the Spider-Man, I took two days off and beat it within those two days. So I think we need to. And, and you should, man. When mm -hmm. Path of Exiles 2 takes out, would you take off for Stalker? Oh, yeah. I think. Did totally. you do the collector's edition? I, I am. I think I am going to do it. I I'm told still, you it's awesome. It's still like a steep price tag. It's been a while since I spent that much money yeah. again because I'm like. I'm so used to just like not pre-ordering anything anymore, mm -hmm. and but uh, but I I'm think it's worth excited. it. I yeah. think it's worth it, man. I think man. it's pretty cool. Um, other than that, you and me also went and saw the Borderlands movie, which we're gonna talk about. Yeah, uh, it it was not good, like at all. What is it? Uh, I also signed up for that Hydrox training. What is that? What is that? Say that. That again? is uh, Hydrox. Yeah. So it's like an entire competition you know how i do yes like now i remember what i was talking about this yeah for like everyone who kind of sees me wear it and you guys kind of see the brand i go to this really great gym called suffer city shout them out man yeah, shout them out no they're amazing they're life-changing uh the coaches there they really care it's a nice little local gym here in gilbert and they like they take really good care of you yeah i mean so, yeah uh, dude like we're all about shouting out local businesses in arizona yeah. so the um, the big thing that's happening is at the end of the year, I think it's either in November or December, it's called like mm -hmm. Hydrox, but it's like a two hour cap and it's like this entire kind of course that you have to finish oh. and it's like really insane, intense yeah. and they're going to be uh, doing the training for it. I don't know if I'll actually compete in it because I'll have to go to like Anaheim and do all the travel and all that. We'll see. I mean, and if you can, why not? I mean, I can. Treat I yourself. Just, yeah, I just I want to be able to make sure that I can actually do it before I can go over there and do it. I think I think you can, and I think this is going to be a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. um, but you said Suffer City, Gilbert, Arizona. Yep. Um, anything else you want to shout out about them to maybe like give the viewers like something if they're looking to like lose weight or build something on what what can they what can they do there? You know, for is it just for losing weight or is it to gain endurance or strength? Like, does it just depend on what they want? Yeah. Um, they have a lot of different options. So, like, the way how it works, it's a class-based system. Mm -hmm. They have different coaches for different days. 
uh, they do different routines. So if you go consistently every day, you kind of get your full body workout. Um, they're most notoriously known for like their move days, which is high cardio, yeah. high intensity. And those are but, your favorites, right? Yeah, totally. <laughs> no, I'm being serious. Yeah, I, no, they are. They, the, um, they push you to your limits and they're really cool about it, but they make sure that you're not doing it in a stupid way where you're going to get yourself hurt, hurt, hurt yourself. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you want to share how much weight you've lost Yeah, I since mean, going? Yeah. I mean, I've been super actually inconsistent as like yeah. a person paying and going there, but still, but still like in the, I'm still year two. And I joined there when I was like 290 pounds, yeah. 95 or something crazy like that. And I'm at like 232. That's awesome. And that's from being inconsistent. Yeah. That's like me like having the typical ups and downs of like anyone who's trying to go through a weight loss journey where they kind of fall off even up to like, I think I even was gone for like two months and then came back and they, it does a really good job as long as you stay committed to it. And to the idea of like, if you really want it, you, you can get, you it. can get it. I and love that. So I really appreciate them. And the community there is awesome. The people there, they treat you like they're family. So it's really cool. That's amazing. I love to hear that. Well, shout out to Suffer City. We'll give them that round of applause and Phil a round of applause for losing that much weight. He's only going to keep getting skinnier and I'm only going to get fatter. So um, with that, I, I saw a couple movies this week. I had, dude, this week was swamped for me. Now, of course, this is coming out the week after, but uh, I on Monday I had a screening. What the fuck did I see? Oh, I saw Blink twice. I can't talk about it. Well, I got... Yeah, I can talk about it. By the time this podcast Blink. comes out, Blink Twice, it has Channing Tatum in it. Um, I won't give too many full thoughts on it, but um, it's about Channing Tatum. He plays like a rich billionaire who buys an island after getting canceled. And this uh, this girl who works at this, like, I don't know, this sweet place that's putting on a gala for him, like, has a huge crush on him. Mm-hmm. And she ends up... Uh, getting invited to this island. Well, this island is a little sinister. Like, it looks fun, but something's going on underneath. And it was fine. It was decent. I kind of saw the twist coming from, like, a mile away. Yeah. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, like, Get Out meets Don't Worry Darling. So I saw that Monday. Tuesday, I saw this movie called It Ends With Us, which I was going to review, but then I decided not to because I don't really care. It was fine. I only went because my wife wanted to see it. She loved the book. Mm-hmm. But guess what? She uh, liked it less than me. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, and it seems like there's a lot of people who like who didn't read the book who like really liked the movie and then there's people who like read the book who seem disappointed in the movie because of like the changes that they made in certain things. Mm-hmm. And then Wednesday, I got to interview two of the cast members from Umbrella Academy. So oh, okay. that was really cool. It was for the final season. Uh, that was Emmy Lampman and Ritu Aria. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. That was how they told me at the junket to say it. Um and then Thursday, we went and saw Borderlands. Yeah, that, uh, that was a journey. So, and then yesterday, what did I do yesterday? Oh, oh D23, yeah, our main topic. I covered all that and sat there for four hours, making my wife be my social media manager while I did trailer reactions and stuff like that. That's funny. So, I was like turning to her, I was like, tweet this out, tweet that out, do this, do that. Shout out to her, I fed her dinner and she was fine. Uh, <laughs> Phil, you ready to get into the uh, the reviewing segment and all the news? Yes. So before we get any further, I just want to say Umbrella Academy Season 4 is now out. It's been out for about a week. Um, I have a full review, but I also got to interview Emmy Lampman, like I talked about, and Ritu Aria. Here's the interview. I, I really want to know, you know, the emotion of family is very strong in every single season, but primarily this one, it's like you guys are finally kind of working together of some sorts yeah. towards, especially towards the For end. The first time. Yeah. Maybe, so I'm of. curious to know what was the feeling going into this final season? How does it compare with the first time you guys ever stepped on set together? And is this where you guys thought your characters would end up at? Oh my God. I was so nervous the first time. So <laughs> oh my God. So, so that first time I stepped on set was the insane asylum stuff um, oh. in season two. Yeah. And that was so cool. I was really excited to like get to work and try out my new things. <laughs> mm-hmm. I had like this pack of cigarettes that I was like, I really want to play with these cigarettes. And they were like, no, we don't have like, we're not paying for this brand. Yeah. And I was like, fuck off. 
<laughs> that's what I do. I was like, we just put tape on it. We can't get tape. We've got yeah. one set. So I'm like, I'll just hold it. I'll just hold it. <laughs> and they were like, well, we can't say anything to that. So fine. <laughs> she really wants this mm -hmm. toy. Um, so I remember that. And now... <laughs> Now on set, um, yeah, it's like walking on, you're like at home with your yeah. family. And yeah. so I'm like, where are the snacks? <laughs> <laughs> Where's my nap area? And, mm. you know, um, it's all, it's just been so exciting mm -hmm. each time. No, I, I, I totally get that. And for you? First time, like season one? Yeah, season one. Um, I mean, I too was incredibly nervous. I'd never been in front of a camera before in yeah. any professional capacity. That's wild. And <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know, no. So I just didn't know what I was doing. Everyone was throwing around all this like lingo and like oh, yeah. camera jargon that I just was like, what is everyone talking about? What does 10 1 mean? Like, what? <laughs> Go to your marks. I was like, I don't yeah, understand. I learned what that meant with this job. Going 10 1. Yeah. Well. Going to the bathroom. Um, Good to know, because I was about to ask, well, yeah, what does that mean? It, when they're like, Emmy's gone 10 1, it, they announce it to the entire casting oh, crew great. that I have gone to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> that, that makes it family very fast. Yes, yes, 10 1, everyone. Um, so, yeah, I, I was incredibly nervous. And, and one of my first scenes was with Elliot. And, you know, it's an Oscar nominated actor. And I just mm -hmm. felt so out of my depths. Um, but also just had to trust that I was like, I'm here for a reason. <laughs> it's going to be great. Even though I don't know what I'm doing and this is crazy and I'm so scared. But, um, but then I don't know, it just immediately felt so at home. And I think we all just clicked right into our characters. And I think we were all just cast so beautifully and it started to just write itself. And I think, okay. um, to answer like one of your later questions yeah. in this one question of yeah. like, did I think that our characters or specifically my character would end up where she does at the end of the fourth season? No way in hell. Like I, I also think this show is so remarkable and wild and, and, and the universe that it's created is exactly. so vast. It, we all could have literally taken any journey. And so I think, um, that was kind of what was so beautiful of being an actor in the show is like every season it was like what nonsense are we going to get up to this season yeah, which is a lot always, of nonsense i mean every season ridiculous. gets crazier it's, it's and, wild yes. it's wild so it was just like what have the what are the writers going to do to us this season yeah. and that was the fun part we never really knew you know and and sometimes it was like changing on the fly and 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 you know we most seasons we'd start filming and we actually like the last episodes wouldn't have been written yet so it was kind okay. of all happening at the same time which was really cool so yeah, yeah. you could never even tell that at all and <laughs> like since this is the final season is there anything you guys took from what your characters may have learned this season specifically about family like both of your guys's characters kind of like start off in like kind of a weird situation you know family's not maybe the main priority but by the end it kind of becomes their main centerpiece. So is there anything you guys took from your guys' character from the final season? Um, I think, again, it's, it's hard with that kind of question with the spoilers. Uh, yeah. Um, but I think one thing is, you know, the, it's the final season mm -hmm. and we felt so much connection and gratitude for filming, knowing that this was going to be the last one. So, yes, within the show and the characters, but also, like, with each other, this, like... Um, just not taking it for granted mm. and you know nothing lasts forever and so just remembering to like cherish the ones around you and that sounds like cliche but it's sort of you know you're living when you're living it you can really feel it like mm -hmm. everything comes to an end and so enjoy it while it's there um, it's easier said than done but you know it's it's like you can either focus on the sad part that is like it's all ending or like oh my god I've got this family from this show yeah. that I get to have in life now like that's the best blessing yeah and I think like the audience also feels that way too it's like when I was finishing this season I was like this is like the most bittersweet ending that I could possibly get and I felt just like I felt a little sad and then it just like all hit me all at once, like a couple hours later. And I was like telling my wife about this. I was like, I can't wait for you to watch this final season. So, yeah. but like back to you as well, like the, the character, like is there anything you took from this final season as well in your character arc? You know, I think some, this season felt very full circle to me. Mm -hmm. um, 
I was 28 when I got cast in the show, and I'm in my 30s now. Um, <laughs> but at a very young age, um, I got cast to portray a woman who is a mother mm -hmm. and is a mother who is, um, you know, has made a lot of mistakes as a mother and hasn't been the best mom. And then we see her move through these seasons trying to constantly change that and get back to her daughter and be the mother that she never had. And I think it was really full circle that I was actually pregnant the entire time we were filming the last season. And so I was actually ending my chapter of like pretending to be a mom while I was becoming a mom in real life. And I think um, even though I learned a lot of what not to do from Allison as a mm -hmm. mom, <laughs> I do think that she's incredibly fierce and incredibly nurturing and, um, and brave and we saw her do anything to mm -hmm. get back to her daughter and we saw her put it all on the line and risk everything, including her relationships with her own brothers and sisters to get back to her daughter. And I think that is really beautiful and really profound. And um, I think I will, I will take Allison's like this like lioness, like fierce motherhood essence from her and, and apply that to my now eight month old baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, congrats on that as Thank well. Thank you. Um, there's a ton of time travel, parallel universes, all these weird circumstances through all the seasons and a lot in this one as well. If you guys could travel back to any day on set, any of the seasons, for any reason, which day would it be for you guys? Just like this sort of time travel going back or forwards. And I don't like the whole going <laughs> backwards thing yeah. because it's like, no regrets, but you're saying it in a nice way, like just to, re <laughs> to revisit it. Revisit yeah. It. So fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I don't know, this season, but spoilers, so. Yeah, none, I understand. <laughs> um, Wait, so re rephrase the question again? What, if you could go back to any day on set for any of the seasons. Set, yeah. <sighs> this season. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would actually, I would say the dance fight, dance off, battle off fight between the Umbrellas and the Sparrows. Okay. That took us about 10 days to film. So it was such a massive undertaking yeah. and so insane and so intense and a lot of rehearsals and a lot of fight training and stunt training. Um, but when we were all on set and they'd turn on the music and we'd start dancing, it was so fun. It was so fun, especially like the freestyle where there's like confetti and balloons everywhere. And we were just, um, yeah, getting to, to just play and have fun. I think that I was just so proud of everybody for actually pulling that off because that was like such a feat mm -hmm. this like dream sequence dance that then in reality is like a massive fight sequence with like you know 14 people like that's wild in a very small space um it was really incredible so it was a long 10 days but I think um I, I really I really had fun doing that yeah I love that it's a great moment it's a great moment in yeah. season three uh so also this season you guys play around with powers a little bit mm -hmm. of course it's a little bit different again mm -hmm. not getting into spoilers so if you guys could take any powers into real life which one would you take and it could be something from the show or it could just be something that maybe never was introduced in the show what about this really great power today because I didn't have this <laughs> I didn't have the best night's sleep mm -hmm. you know we had the the premiere Monday, Monday. yep we've been doing a lot of press and yesterday, we went for dinner, and then we had a 5 a.m. call time this morning, and I didn't sleep that well. So my power would be to go to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be amazing? And then maybe uh, wake up. Wake feeling, up when you want refreshed. to, yeah. But you'd be asleep, so how would you do, do that? Oh, okay. I don't know. Um, so yeah, just like making things happen instantly. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like because it's so unique and I feel like maybe I'm partial to it, but I do think the mind manipulation of Allison is yeah. pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And I think like as the seasons yeah, go, I, someone says they love you. They, it's like because you've manipulated them into that. Like that's not satisfying. I didn't say I was going to use it for that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I had rumor you love me. 
Um, but yeah, but I also think it's an incredibly risky power to have and can be used f for not great things. Yeah. So I also understand that it's, you know, that's also complicated. So then, so then my easier answer would probably be, I don't know, I think time travel is cool. Hey, all that works out. Well, thank you guys so much again for coming to of Arizona. Course. Embracing the heat because it is the worst time. <laughs> the surface time to be of the sun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we appreciate you guys. And again, love the season. So thank you guys again. Thank you. Thank you so much again for them for coming all the way to Arizona during the hottest time. Uh, we really do appreciate them being able to be a part of the Into the Geek First podcast. And uh, Phil, have you ever checked out Umbrella Academy or have you ever heard about it? I have heard about it, especially like when the first two seasons came out. Everyone mm -hmm. was really on it. And I was just another thing on my watch yeah. list. Would you watch it? Do you think you, I think you'd like it. Yeah. I, I think, I think the later seasons might not be like your cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I think you would still enjoy it for what it is, but I think it's cool that we got to have them on the podcast and like got to go there and interview them and everything like that. So thank you again to them. Uh, I overall enjoyed the last season. I think it's a little bit rushed. It only had six episodes instead of the regular 10. So a lot of storylines definitely got rushed towards the back half, but the conclusion of it all felt bittersweet and mm -hmm. I love it. So goodbye to our favorite Hargraves. Phil, you've been playing Marvel Rivals, which is like the Overwatch version of right. Marvel. And I, I told you when this was announced, I was like, Phil, I am so excited for this. Now, I didn't get an invite to the beta because someone hates me. No one wants me to play this damn game. But you have been able to play it. That's right. So give us your preview slash review, and I might ask you a couple questions yep. as well. So for those who, that don't know, Marvel Rivals is just kind of like what you expect Overwatch to be. It's a hero shooter, 6v6. You, um, Their kind of twist on it is that each character kind of has like these synergies. And so you build your comp off of these synergies. Okay. So for example, Groot and Rocket are on there, right? So when they're together, or if you have them on the same team, they both get like a health boost but Rocket can actually jump on Groot's back. That's cool. And so Groot is like at the tank role of the game. So when you have like a tank with a DPS on your back, mm -hmm. it's kind of at this cool little unique interaction. Uh, Rocket and Punisher, when they're together, they can drop like a aura buff. That makes it so that way they both shoot faster and it's like unlimited ammo. Oh, that's for a short amount of time, yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah, for a okay. short amount of time. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of the map layouts do feel like a lot of the Overwatch is are they maps. destructible yeah they're so it's hard to say destructible because I some things like, are destructible yeah it's, okay it's very hard sometimes to tell like what it can be broken and what is um when it does break it kind of like comes back like 15 seconds okay later. there's like a king of the hill map kind of deal okay uh kind of bit like uh whatever that mode is from Overwatch, where you just take control of one point. I think it's literally called control. Yeah, control, <laughs> yeah. So, like, the environments around the control points, usually they'll break, and then they come back in, like, 10, 15 seconds later. It's a little bit weird, but... Okay. Other than that, I mean, it was fun. It was fine for what I played. Um, I definitely think they need some tweaking. Mm -hmm. I played Punisher the whole time. That was, like, my favorite role. That was your, your uh, what, what do they call it, your main? Yeah, my main. That was, like, the one that I was playing. There's, like, some stuff. Star-Lord looked cool. Yeah, Star-Lord was cool. He's just Tracer. Oh, okay. That's just how So is Punisher, it. like, Soldier, then? Yeah, pretty okay. much. Like, they got some discrepancies. Like, Do you think this is, like an overwatch killer like i mean overwatch is kind of is already I, I been think dying overwatch kind of killed themselves yeah so real. <laughs> yeah but but like the killer to this like couldn't this be something that saves hero shooters to an extent or do you think this is something that's just going to come and die pretty fast yeah i think it's i think it will get popular at the start start but i does it depend on support yeah it also really depends on the support i don't see them getting this um what is it? The audience, the amount of audience that mm -hmm. they hope for. Okay. So I don't know. I don't think support will be super long. They might keep it around long, but mm -hmm. uh, I guess like the best way to describe it, like I don't think it's, it beats what peak Overwatch was when it first came out. Okay. But I definitely think like... It's on the right course. Yeah, it's definitely better than the current Overwatch and like the other hero shooters that I've played. And that's fair. I mean, for me, like... I I've just been saying I've been I love hero shooters. I think they're when you get a really cool hero shooter, I, you can fall really into it. And the first Overwatch for me was like 
I put so many hours in that. Yeah. And I was, and the only reason I, I gave any like leniency towards it is because it was Blizzard. And mm -hmm. I loved like Warcraft, Starcraft, but this is like their new IP. Like, what is this thing? I remember when the beta came out, I played it and I put like 60 hours infinitely into that thing. I was yeah. like so addicted. And I took time off from work to play it when it finally came out. And I loved it. Like, it's one of my most played games probably of all time, if I'm being honest. And, you know, I fell off. I got bored. Yeah. Um, then Overwatch 2 came out. And I was like, oh, you know, I'll, I'll hop back on this. And <laughs> it, which has never Star happened. It, it never happened, right? No, yeah. got scrapped. <laughs> but I was more excited for just, okay, new, new mechanics, new characters, whatever. It shouldn't be called Overwatch 2, but I get it. This is the way to get fans back in. And it just, it didn't have the same leniency towards me, which disappointed. Then I tried Concord's beta, which didn't impress me whatsoever, which I'm sure we'll talk about. At, yeah. Once once that game comes out, I'm sure we'll have news topics to talk about more on mm -hmm. Concord. But then this Marvel Rivals was announced. And it looks like I, I, I became obsessed with the art style. And, that, and then like the fact that it was a hero shooter. I was like, this is cool. Like, mm -hmm. I like this concept of playing as different Marvel heroes and villains. Villains, right? Yeah. Okay. They have uh, all sorts of people. Namor's in there. Okay, Namor. Uh, Hela. Is Hela? Can you play as Hela? Oh, that's the uh, that's the main villain from Thor, right? Yeah, yeah. Thor 2? Thor 3. Thor 3. Ah, oh, so close. Yeah. But she's in it too, right? Yes. I'm like looking at a list of the characters. Uh, yeah. Oh, Black Panther looks cool. Was yeah, he cool? Black, yeah, Black Panther was actually pretty cool. I think he's kind of... Is he like uh, the ninja from Overwatch? Uh, oh... Uh, I don't remember. Grenin no, Greninja. Uh, <laughs> Greninja that, that's uh, that's Pokemon. Uh, Genji. Genji. That's why. Okay. This is this is why we have a, a laptop to look yeah. at stuff. But yeah, dude. Like, I'm kind of excited for this. So, is there any heroes you would like to see show up in here? Ooh, I I do. I think they did show off Thor in there already. Yeah, Thor, Thor has been announced. Yeah. Um, I think I saw a couple people playing it actually. I don't know if they tossed. Uh, so the, the ones that have been, so Thor has been announced, Captain America, Jeff the Land Shark. These are things that were like announced at Comic Con. Mm -hmm. um, so like any other characters that you would like I to think see? Moon Knight would be a pretty cool. Ooh, one. which version? Uh, I think he would be. Like or a should you be able to Swift? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that would be a cool one. Like um, cool mechanic. Yeah, switch switch yeah. personalities. Get a smaller kit. That'd be awesome. One. Yeah. Kind of be like a jack of all trades. Mm -hmm. I, I like cool. that. I think for me, uh, Daredevil is an easy one that I would like oh, yeah, to see that, in there. That would be cool um, Miss Marvel, I think, would be cool with the stretchy ability. Or just put Fan Mr. Fantastic. Either one, I think, would be pretty sick oh, to yeah, have. I need, yeah, I need a Fantastic Four. Silver um, Surfer. Silver Surfer. Oh, yeah. That would be cool. Uh, I'm trying to think of anyone else that hasn't been. I know Venom's in it, right? Yeah. Venom's in it. Yeah, I think Venom is strong. Mantis, that. Magneto. Oh, Magneto's in it? Mm -hmm. Oh, is he cool to play as? Yeah, he's pretty cool. I've seen people play him. I think he's a little bit of a. Is it character. broken into classes? Like, how is it? Like, you know how Overwatch has like your tanks, your support. Yeah, like, that, is that how this is built, or is it just like all the characters are there? Um, they do like separate them by classes. Okay. Um, it's much more of like a guideline of like, oh, you're going to play uh, Venom. He is a tank class. Just, okay. It's much more of like letting you know what they are and mm -hmm. like labels. Than it is like a, like you have to play a tank. Because okay. They don't have any like uh, what is it? They Do you like role. that? Do you like that? I think it. I think Overwatch's like big mistake was introducing like the whole role thing. Mm -hmm. so, so you like that they separated themselves yeah, from that? Okay. That they just kind of let you. I don't know. It's it's hard to say with heroes. Here's the dude. leaked Marvel rival characters. Ready? Yeah. Human Torch. Okay. Hawkeye. Captain America. Cloak and Dagger. Ultron, Moon Knight, oh. Squirrel Girl, Black Widow, Mr. Fantastic, Winter Soldier. This one is a good one. Blade, oh. Psylocke, Wolverine, Invisible Woman, The Thing, and Iron Fist. That's a that's that, a Yeah. I, so I think for me, what's really going to come from this is the support, the, the repetition of replaying it. Is there a thing that hooks people into keep replaying this it doesn't have to be levels or anything like that but what is the thing that makes people want to keep playing it you know what i mean mm -hmm. is it that fun that you don't care if you like overwatch there was really no progression like you got the loot boxes in the first one and then yeah, they got rid of that it's kind of a bit the same in this one um they Skins. obviously have their battle pass system yeah to try to keep people in uh they 
the free one, or at least during the beta, they actually gave you a couple of cool skins. There's okay. Like a cyan um, venom skin. Okay. Kind of like similar, like the yeah venom from PS2 and Ooh. Spider-Man 2. Okay. That, that's what it kind of reminded me of. But uh, yeah, it's it's hard with hero shooters nowadays because I feel like it's been like a saturated market or very it's saturated. Kind of like it's it feels a little couple years too yeah. late. So, so in the end. Uh, obviously the game is not officially out um, but as a preview score what would you give it out of 10 skip the 7 skip the 7 yeah I give it right now a 6 out 6, six out, of out of 10 yeah okay simply because I think there needs to be a few balancing changes okay um, I think some of the characters characters need to have like their abilities more, like Hulk um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it's like sometimes the visuals are kind of like hard to just dis- like see or to mm-hmm. like visually read so it's that's where i kind of struggle with like loki i didn't understand that like he can make people like pretty like tanky just okay. by having like his aura around and like his okay. clones around so like i think there needs to be much more of like visual comprehension for those okay but um if they tweak it up right i could see it being just like a decent b right like kind of game so or eight. maybe it goes bigger than that i mean you don't you I no don't, one knows like you it could blow the hey, fuck you up know what? i'm always up to being wrong and having marvel rivals being the next big esport game ever fair enough man so. well with that said that is phil's preview slash sort of review for marvel rivals beta uh does there a release date for this do we know I marvel i don't think so i'll look it up rivals release date um end of 2024 is all they say So we'll see. Jumping into the next thing is Presumed Innocence. This series just ended like a couple weeks ago. Me and my wife were waiting to watch this. It stars Jake Gyllenhaal. Um, We binged it in one day, and it's about a horrific murder that upends the Chicago prosecuting attorney's office when one of its own is suspected of that crime. That suspect is Jake Gyllenhaal. It also stars the likes of Ruth Nega and Bill Camp. Now, Phil, I got to watch this with my wife. We binged it in one sitting. It was one of the best series of the entire year. You never... My favorite thing about the series was the fact that you never knew if he actually did it or not. Like, you find out. Mm Mm-hmm. But I love that because some series you watch and you're like two, three episodes in, you're like, he clearly didn't do it or he clearly did do it or, okay, it's not him, but it it has to be this person, right? Yeah. They, every time it changes your opinion by the end of the episode, you're like, oh, he didn't do it. There's no way. It's got to be this guy. Mm -hmm. And then the next episode introduces something different to it all. And you're like, oh, maybe he did do it. And he just like can't recollect it okay, no, it's not him. It has to be the, oh, wait, no, maybe it is him. And having those conversations with my wife was like one of the best experiences. Like for an eight episode series, you really get into the thick of this and how this entire murder ruins this family's life. Because so he's, you know, the Chicago prosecuting attorney. He's like the main one that prosecutes all these people and then gets, you know, uh, basically basically said that, you know, he, he gets suspected of the crime. Mm -hmm. so when he's suspected of the crime you're like okay so like maybe he did do it maybe he didn't but then it comes out like why is he suspected of the crime because he's having an affair with this lady Mm -hmm. the entire time he has two teenage kids and a wife and he was having an affair with this lady who was also pregnant with his kid so it just gets very messy and all these sorts of things and the fact that like again it's just you never know yeah and i was really honed into how is this going to end? Who actually did it? Is he guilty? Does he get found guilty? And all the revelations that come out of it like really sucked me into this series. I personally think this is one of the best shows of this year. Like I said, um, I would totally give it like a 9.5 out of 10. It got renewed for a second season. Um, I don't know if Jake Hall's coming back. There's some talk that it might just be like every season's a different crime story mm-hmm. with different characters and different actors. But part of me wants to see a little bit more of some of the characters in here. So I'm hoping that season two like actually dives into that. Is this a series that like you feel like you'd be interested in watching? That sounds cool. Like a murder mystery kind of deal is it's a very hard balancing act. Mm -hmm. So just like hearing that you um you were having like kind of all these second guesses. I think that's like cool. When you find a good series that balances um and just doesn't like throw it away super easy. 
I agree. Uh, Jake John Hall's phenomenal in this. Uh, Ruth Nega, who plays his wife, phenomenal. Uh, Bill Camp, phenomenal. Like, really much every person involved with the series is just great. Um, but overall, I loved it. 9.5 out of 10. Uh, the only reason I'm giving it that 0. .5 is mostly because I'm curious to see if it gets a second season. If mm -hmm. it gets a second, like, it's not like it left me with questions that needed to be answered, but there's certain things that I would like to see moved forward. And I feel like a season two can do that. So we will see. Jumping in next, Phil, you got to play Star Wars Bounty Hunter. Yes, I did. So explain to the people what is Star Wars Bounty Hunter and why you're enjoying it. Oh, dude. For those who don't know, the younger people out there, Star Wars Bounty Hunter was like one of those old classic Star Wars games from like the early 2000s. For the PS2 and the PS2, GameCube. I, Xbox, I know it was yeah. GameCube. Because I have it for the GameCube. So yeah. When did that come out? Are you looking? Uh, I'll look it up right original? now. 2002. Yeah, I was. I was actually thinking 2002. It's. It's a really good game. It's, no Xbox, uh, GameCube, and PlayStation Two oh, only. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it came out on mm -mm. Xbox. Nope. Um. Wow, that made me lose my train of thought. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. But, no, but, you're but, all good. But, no, so you play as Jango Fett. Um, you. It's like a kind of bit of like a prequel to the Clone Wars movie, mm -hmm. and you kind of just see how all the events leading up to it, how he meets that assassin lady, and it's like honestly, it's way ahead of its time. I think the most difficult part about the game in the original was like your fighting controller scheme. Yeah. Um, they fixed that too, right? Yeah. A lot of the controller stuff early in the 2000s, like people didn't know what to do. No, with like, the second stick. No, yeah. Yeah. There was just like no like guidelines. And it wasn't until like I pretty much played like Call of Duty 2 on the Xbox 360. Yeah. Where they finally were like, oh, we should use this to aim. Yeah. So. Uh, they finally released a remastered version of it. They just kind of up, uh, upscaled the textures. It's a lot of the original stuff. And they just gave some quality of life things like a modern controller scheme. And now you can move and shoot. That's not really take controls. Uh, honestly, dude, it's crazy how far ahead of time that this game is. Mm -hmm. So like a lot of the mechanics in there, there's vaulting, there's climbing, um, like Uncharted stuff. Yeah, like Uncharted yeah. stuff. And like the Bounty Hunter system, I mean, I was like five or whatever when this came out. So yeah. like I didn't really understand it, but you use a scanner, you scan people, you mark them, and then you have to actually tie them up and then you can collect them. Like there's a lot of things that were kind of ahead of its time. Time that surprised me that you see in games today or games that got popular throughout like the PS3 genre or like the gen generation yeah. that it had like years ago, like the rocket launcher on your back on your jetpack and everything that's all guided through aim. So you can actually make it do like loop de loops and do all that kind yeah. of cool stuff. The gadgets were really just cool. I like playing through this. It made me so happy. That's awesome. Yeah. No, man. I remember playing this back in the day on the PlayStation two and loving it. And then, um, the GameCube was like the, the way I played it most <clears> of my childhood. And it was a game I never beat as a kid. I, I beat it now. Cause I went back and played it like as yeah. an older, cause as a kid, you're kind of just like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it was, it is ahead of its time. And I think this kind of like laid the groundwork for a lot of action adventure games that seem to come out later, specifically in like the PS3 and Xbox mm -hmm. 360 days. Like I mentioned uncharted, like it is very much uncharted esque. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think we need more games like this nowadays. Um, so I think it's cool that like you got to, you know, play that is on pc right yep they just came out on steam just like a few weeks ago or something okay like that. and it's just kind of like sold you like you yeah, just love revisiting that yeah it's just awesome you know what was cool was the uh the auto aim mechanics where he automatically whenever you're in a fight yeah. he's already kind of looking around with both his mm -hmm. hands targeting the yeah. other person which is really cool so you get to shoot two targets at once yeah instead of just like focusing on, on one. the one yeah that's so cool i love it do you is jenko fett like one of your favorite star wars characters would you feel before this game and after now i think he just like he came at the perfect time because like everyone loved boba fett yeah so when clone wars came out and you kind of see like oh, boba fett's is, origins and yeah stuff. yeah so i think it was just kind of carrying the mantle and that legacy of like Boba Fett and mm -hmm. then you get to see this father figure and how he became to be which yeah. is really cool you know it'd be a fun thing to do on this 
podcast, um, this goes for movies and games, is to revisit older stuff and then like talk about it. Mm -hmm. Um, Older uh, Star Wars games, older, uh, I mean, obviously Star Wars movies, but like older movies and stuff like that. Maybe that's something we should look into where we can come back and have that conversation. Cause like talking about the Revenge of the Sith game, did you ever get to play that one? Oh my goodness, yeah, that one was- Do you remember how they had the like Mortal Kombat mode where you could Mm -hmm. fight? That like, that's for me is like awesome Force Unleashed. Would be mm-hmm. awesome to talk about uh, Knights of the Old Republic, which I don't think you've ever played the original, right? Yeah, I'm actually playing through it right now. Oh, okay. Do you like it? Yeah, I'm on like Act Two or something like that. So I love that game. I'm so pissed about that remake. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's the easiest thing. The easy. Well, not. It's hard making a video game. I understand, yeah. but it is the easiest idea to make. Like that is like printing money. If you just, or, and I've said this, it baffles me that like that uh, Old Republic uh, MMO, how Mm -hmm. that's not been coming to consoles. I know it's on PC and everything like that. I don't play PC a lot, Mm -hmm. but like a lot of these MMOs, World of Warcraft, stuff like that should be moved to consoles. Was it you that was talking about like Game Pass? Because since they- uh, Game Pass should have World of Warcraft. Yeah. It, It makes no, like that should be your subscription to play it. Yeah, I think that would be a cool way to bring people on. Obviously, they can't do it on console because just so many spells. And I look at a like a professional WoW streamer and I see like 80 hot bars yeah. and skills on their screen. And I'm like, all right. But you can doing? plug a mouse and keyboard into a PlayStation. Yeah. So like you can you can do it. I'm just saying it is possible to do. So mm-hmm. um, final review score for Bounty Hunter. Like right now, what would you say it is? Oh, dude, it's an 8 out of 10. 8 me. out of 10. Okay. It. Awesome. So. Any issues that you've ran into, like that keeps you from going the, the nine out of ten, ten mm, out of ten? No, like there's just small, tiny bugs that were just silly. Like I, mm-hmm. like uh, I was destroying something. You have to like break a gate, yeah. and then you have to shoot a generator or whatever. So when I break the gate and I try to aim and like move backwards to shoot, yeah, I would grab the ledge of the gate and I would go under the map Uh-oh. and I would fall through the map like, and it's die. Silly, yep. Yeah, it's like silly, silly stuff, stuff like that. that. So. I get that. So last thing to talk, well, last thing before we get into Borderlands, Game Informer is done. That's right. This oh saddens me. It I does. have so many covers still. Because I, I would, I would, if I didn't want to keep the magazine, I'd just cut the cover off and keep it. So I have hundreds of these in my room. That's crazy. I never yeah, knew Yeah, it's actually, uh, I actually, eventually, when we upgrade the studio, I actually want to make the background all those covers. Oh, I that- have Bioshock, Gears of War, Last of Us. Uh, I'm pretty sure I still have the original Borderlands one before mm-hmm. it was comic-y, like where it looked all realistic and stuff. Oh, wow. So I am a huge advocate for Game Informer. This Dude. was my magazine. Like some people had Nintendo Power, all these things like that. So first off, I want to read what was on the put on their website because now you can't look at anything mm-hmm. and that disappoints me. So the final, I got hair in my fucking mouth, man. What the fuck? You should just get rid of the beard. Uh, no, no. My wife won't let me. <laughs> uh, Final level, farewell from Game Informer. After 33 thrilling years of bringing you to the latest news and reviews and insights from the ever-evolving world of gaming, it is with a heavy heart that we have announced the closure of Game Informer. Now, for everyone to know, none of the staff was let known until this got put up. From the early days of pixelated adventures to today's immersive virtual realms, we've been honored to share this with incredible journey with you, our loyal readers. While our pressing may stop, the passion for gaming we'll, we've cultivated together will continue to live on. Thank you for putting part of your epic quest, and may your own gaming adventures never end. Someone put chat GPT. This is basically that. I'm not joking. So this came from GameStop. Like they took all the access away from all the editors, the editor in chief, everything like that. So there's a lot of controversy going on with that. I don't want to focus on the bad because there's bad in every industry, especially when you close down something. I want to focus on the good. What is your, like for you, like what was your thing for Game Informer? We'll kind of go back and forth on that. So just like Game Informer in itself. Yeah. Like like, the way it impacted me was when I was little, mm -hmm. my, um, when my dad used to take me to work and so mm-hmm. I would always stop at the magazine section and just literally I would sit in the middle of this store on the floor in this aisle grabbing a Game Informer magazine and I would just keep on reading it or read all the stuff. Everything. Yeah. And then if I would sit there and I would try to find the copy that would have a demo disc. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember 
it's still like my profile picture on the Xbox 360. Uh -huh. I got a demo disc and it was right around Dead Rising 2. Uh -huh. And I got like the pictures for, um, what is it, the boss, the the two girls in Dead oh, Rising yeah, 2. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot I their names. I, I know what you're talking about, though. Names. But I got that and that was like my profile picture. And now that's like a 180 JPEG on my little Xbox Game Pass thing now. <laughs> that's why it's that yeah yeah i mean for me i think everyone has like a if you were in gaming and stuff everyone has a fond memory of it i remember my dad subscribed to whatever GameStop's thing was and we would start getting these game informer magazines and he'd just give them to me and i'd look at them and that was my way of like being able to look at video games that i either could not afford or could not play mm. mostly for both reasons but yeah. It was so cool getting to live through those magazines. The artwork was always stunning on the covers, but also like it taught me so much about gaming, journalism. It was probably the first form of journalism I actually got into. And it, it really saddens me that they're gone. Yeah. And it sucks that GameStop's closing them. I know print magazine is not like a huge thing, but like I remember like a lot of my first like open eyes things to a game coming out was Game Informer whether it was their review section, whether it was their preview section, whether it was whatever was on the cover, that's how I found out about games. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a cell phone until I was like seventh, eighth grade. I didn't have access to the internet until seventh or eighth grade, really, you know? Um, so like kind of just kind of go through this. Like I remember like a uh, bullet storm that was announced on there and I was like, holy shit, what is this game? And it looked so fucking cool. Do you have like a a cover or like a game that you remember reading about in there? And you're like, I have to play this. Uh, Halo Two was on there. Oh, okay. Halo Two was on there. Let me see if I pull up the cover. Um. Oh yeah, with uh, I don't know if I can turn this all the way around, but this one. Yep. Yeah that that is. I that think they did a sick. Republic Commando one as well. I'll look it up. Uh yeah man I mean those and are Dead Rising too those are like the ones that I remember. Okay. You know what I also remember? I remember getting a demo disc and it had a, what is it that? Not Ratatouille. It was the other one. Flushed Away. Flushed Away. <laughs> nah, I remember the that. demo for Flushed Away. I love that. Uh, yeah, no, man. This is my first, like just kind of going through like some of the covers. It was my first introduction to Border or Bioshock Borderlands as well, which we'll talk mm -hmm. about the movie in a second. And when they first showed off Borderlands, guys, it was not the comic graphic style. It was proposed as Mad Max meets Diablo, which the second I read that on the cover, I'm like, oh my fucking God, like that's the coolest thing ever because yeah. Diablo was like a huge piece of my childhood and I see you get cars and combat like that. That's just fucking sick. Dead Space 2 is another one when it was first announced. Uh, Batman Arkham City, I don't know if you remember the cover, it was white and he had like the little drips of blood on oh, his. Yeah. Like That was sick. The Last of Us, uh, Star Wars Force Unleashed, like Fallout 3, Halo Reach. Did they ever do like a digital format they did have a digital format they actually stopped printing for a while and would only do digital and then recently i think this year they started going back to print and then boom closed um epic mickey do you remember that game that's where it opened up I, hey why yeah, are you that's laughing getting re remastered by yeah the way. i have it pre-ordered oh my goodness why you did you did. ever play it no i did not dude it's fucking great it's a great game. The reason I love Epic Mickey, and I'll probably review it on here when the remaster comes out, is mostly for the fact that it is a, um, it, it touches into Disney lore, like Oswald the Lucky Rabbit being the villain. Uh -huh. Who, like, I don't know if you know, like, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit was created before Mickey Mouse. The only reason he wasn't the icon for Disney is because he lost the rights to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Oh. So it's very meta. That's why, like, Epic Mickey is a very smart platformer. And specifically in how it touches into the Disney history. So oh, okay. I've I've always loved that. But dude, I am so depressed that Game Informer is like I know. over. It's kind of a bit of a piece of your childhood. I understand that like as time goes on, a lot of those printing formats they die. Jittle, yeah. It's hard. Like, I just found an oblivion cover. <laughs> Dude, Oblivion. I remember reading That's that crazy. one. Borderlands 2, I remember reading that one. Bioshock yeah. Infinite. Gears of War 3 is probably my favorite. It was them on top of a bunch of Lambents. Mm -hmm. and, and it's just, it's it, it makes me really sad. Um, I, I seriously cannot believe it. A Brutal Legends. 
Brutal Resistance Legends. Three. If it, it uh, when I go home today, I might actually find them. I'll send you pictures. Yeah. But it makes me sad. I to ask, and this might be a personal question, so feel free to skip it. But was your dad into it as well? Did uh, he like reading them, or were you more of just when you'd go to work with him? I think it was just like my dad is like, all right, here's something for you to just yeah. watch and or, or like read while I'm doing work. Yeah. That's pretty much all it was. Okay. But you so. would enjoy going through them, and not mm. even just for the demo disc, but like did it introduce you to certain games that like you didn't think you would ever be introduced to? Oh yeah, for sure. Maple story was one. I remember the ads through there. Do you remember the maple story ads? Like how they would have like the little characters. Oh yeah. That's how I got into that game. I remember I was like, what is this? Like a side scroller, but it's like online and open world. That that's fucking cool. That's to still me. like going crazy nowadays. That's still popular. Although it's facing a lot of controversy. Yeah. I was about to say, I, I heard I, there's a lot of stuff going on with that. There's a lot of stuff that I'm not fully familiar with. Uh, Maple Stories just kind of disappointed me, if I'm being honest with you. No, I just, fair. yeah. So, with that said, man, <sighs> Borderlands the movie. Um, oh, yeah. Goodbye, Game Informer, by the way. Goodbye. Bye. We, we love we'll you. miss you. Thank you for all the memories. Yes, thank you. I'm trying not to get emotional over here, man. But uh, we'll, let's talk about Borderlands so we don't cry. Um, <laughs> well, we should cry because we wasted our fucking time with this movie. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Midway through, I almost thought about asking you, do you just want to leave and go find Deadpool and Wolverine and just watch it again? That's fine. I, but I was like, no, we're doing this for the podcast. Yeah. Um, it, it's not good. No. This movie's not good. Um, the Borderlands movie has kind of gone through a lot of bullshit. I'll set up the whole thing. So long, long ago, a script was written for Borderlands, Phil. What are you looking for? No, the water bottle was teeter-tattered. Oh. There we go. So go long, ahead. long time. Let me restart this. <clears throat> We're restarting this. A long time ago. In a galaxy far, far away. Well, kind of, I guess. Yeah. Um, a writer by the name of Craig Mazin came into the picture and wrote a Borderlands script. Now, Craig Mazin, I don't know if you, does that name sound familiar to you? Mm -mm. This is the man who made The Last of Us show. This oh. is the man who made Chernobyl. Oh. Now, he's made a lot of bad stuff in the past, but he wrote a script for Borderlands. I read it a while ago. I'm not going to go into detail because I promised the person I read it that I wouldn't. It was an amazing script. It was an amazing script, amazing idea, same characters, but an amazing, amazing, amazing situation. And all of Hollywood loved this script. It was on the black, uh, they call it like the black market for a while where people were just so invested. They were like, this has to be made. No one, but everyone kind of didn't know if it was a risk or not to make the movie, you know, because yeah. we don't know if, like, will this appeal to the general going audience? Will it not? So then Lionsgate said, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna make this movie, and they hired fucking Eli Roth, who I don't I I'm sure Eli Roth is a very nice man, but he's not the best director. Mm -hmm. He's made things like Hostel, which I like. Wow! But other than that, that's surprising, especially for how PG that movie felt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, which uh, we'll get to that. Yeah. So then he's made other movies, but overall he's just not made a lot of great films. Yeah. He's made maybe entertaining ones, which I had two ultimatums when he was announced. One, this might be his big, awesome movie, because he's never made a giant movie. Mm -hmm. And it won't look cheap, and it'll look great. A lot of his movies look cheap. And I'm like, this will be awesome. Then you get Kate Blanchett announced, who's won multiple Oscars. To get Kate Blanchett, who's only been in one franchise before this, which was Hela in uh, Thor Ragnarok. Mm -hmm. okay now you're interesting me because she only picks she's very particular Kevin Hart is rolling kind of made me roll my eyes but whatever rest of the cast solid good then they go into development on the movie three years ago three years ago and it just sat on a shelf then last year they did reshoots for it and Eli Roth was not allowed to be a part of those reshoots they brought Tim Miller in the guy who made Deadpool and Terminator Dark Fate to spruce up the action, made it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And I can completely tell which action scene it was. It was the one when they're fighting all the raiders underground. Mm -hmm. Because that was genuinely the only good action scene in the movie. Yeah. Like the only overall entertaining one. So, now we are here. And what has come out is a lot of things. Craig Mazin wanted his name off the script. Because when he went back and looked at the script, it was completely different. I can attest that most of the script was completely different. Yeah. It, the jokes weren't as funny. They weren't as satire. They were more 
poop and pee jokes, which is kind of the truth. Yeah. And if there weren't really any jokes, there wasn't. They also took out a lot of the heart and emotion and the story depth. And you can actually see that. Like in the finale, one thing I noticed was like there's a part where Lilith is supposed to care about all these characters to save them. And I didn't give a fuck if she saved them or not. Yeah. I really felt that. So Craig Mazin wrote his name off. Eli Roth wasn't allowed to finish the movie with the reshoots. They said it was for scheduling conflicts, but I don't believe that. And three, the movie was shot to be rated R. They made it be PG-13 because they knew this movie probably sucks. We need to get as much money back as we can. This movie went through hell. And yeah. uh, it sucks because I think Borderlands is one of the coolest things ever. It should be Mad Max meets Star Wars. But it, this movie ended up being a poor man's shitty version of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah. And to put a test to this, you can make your own Guardians of the Galaxy in your own world and all your own things because Dungeons and Dragons literally came out two years ago. Almost the same concept. Group of ragtag misfit characters that should not fit together or work together, but they made that work with fun action, fun humor, fun lore, fun world building, and you made the char- you you liked the characters by the end. Did mm-hmm. you watch Dungeons and Dragons? Yeah, I liked very it. big surprise. It was a good movie. This should have been the same for most people because I'm not a Dungeons and Dragons fan. I don't understand anything about it. Mm-hmm. That movie made me go. That was really fun. I really like that. That's how Borderlands should have been for most people. You didn't have to play the video game. You didn't have to know any of that. It should have just been a fun, wacky world for most. And it was not fun. This movie commits the worst sin. It is boring. It is yeah. boring. Phil, is there anything good you liked about the movie? <laughs> oh, you know what I liked? Yeah. There was one shot in the film. What shot? I really, really liked. It was, uh, what, are, what are the birds called? I think they're called racks. Yeah. So it was when the when they're doing their traveling or whatever. Oh yeah. And they were going through the canyon. There was a rack that came up. Yeah. The skags looked cool. Yeah, yeah, and it stabbed the skag and it flew off with it and ate it. I'm like, oh, that's a really cool. That was shot. your favorite thing. Yeah, that was my favorite shot because <laughs> that was the first bit of violence that actually wasn't afraid to show violence. Yeah. No. Um. I can give the film a couple pros because I think in my review I gave it a D minus, uh, which equivalents to like a three, a four. The movie, I thought Kate Blanchett was really good as Lilith. I mm. will, like, she tried her best. I'm not saying the dialogue was great. I'm not saying, like, the character development was great. But in terms of what Lilith is from the game, Kate Blanchett plays a really good version of an older version of Lilith. Mm-hmm. I like that. Tiny Tina, she was pretty solid, too. I liked her. Yeah. She embodies that. Jack Black kind of surprised me as Jack, uh, as a claptrap. I rolled my eyes once I heard he was voicing. It's like, why didn't you just get the original voice actor? Yeah. Kind of made it work. Claptrap overall looked good too. I'll, I'll say that. Uh, and Easter egg wise in production design, like Sanctuary looked really good. I like mm-hmm. that stuff. You know what? They do a good job on at least making Borderlands look Borderlands. Mm-hmm. It still um, looked cheap though. Like, yeah. th- like so, it's weird. I saw someone say this and I fully agree and I don't understand how to express it, but they said this movie looks like one of the most expensive movies I've seen, but also one of the most cheap ass movies I've ever watched. Yeah. I was going to say the one shot when they were doing the chase sequence, when they're in the Hummer yeah. and you see the girl flying on yeah. the little hover thing and they're going through the Canyon. You could just tell that like the background. green screen yeah it was like or even when tiny tina's standing all the way up and throwing the bombs the mm-hmm. bunny bombs i was like that looks fake it looks fake and then when they're not it's like oh the environment like actually looks pretty cool how much do you think this film cost i i would say like probably close to 200 million wasn't it, it was uh like- it's 120 to 150 but after marketing probably 200 yeah. i would imagine I just, I don't know, man. Like, there's so many inconsistencies with this film. Like, I think to attest, like, I didn't care about any of the characters. What about no. you? It, it was kind of like whatever. I mean, Krieg was just... Uh, I could barely understand what he was saying. Yeah. It, it wasn't, like, in the things that he was saying, like, they tried to do the whole thing where, like, in the game, because he just says nonsensical things. Mm-hmm. That's, like, his whole charm, right? Yeah. But he doesn't really say much, which is kind of weird compared to his his character. Game. Yeah. But and then again, it's like I literally looked at this group of ragtag characters and I'm like, there's nothing developing any of you. Like, I didn't get why Roland was doing this. I didn't understand why. I understood why Tannis was for the most part. Mm-hmm. But like, I just sat there and I'm like, I don't care what's happening in this movie. And I say that as a fan of the games 
And I say that as someone who wanted to like this movie and Mm -hmm. be the ultimate. And it's like, it's not even bad that it's like good, like Serenity. It's just a bad movie. Yeah. Because it's boring. I think the Were you bored? Yeah. I think the part where I rolled my eyes the most at (laughs) was the, was like the last stand sequence with Roland. Oh, by the elevator. Yeah. And he's shooting all the guys. Yeah. He's shooting all the guys and then he throws the bomb. And then what made me like really just set my eyes backwards was he gets up, right? He lives. Yeah. By the way, guys, we're spoiling the movie. We saw the movie. So you guys don't have to. Yeah. Was when he gets up and he's under all the bodies. Right. And it's just the actors and they just like smudged some like dirt on them. Yeah. And and that's why I go as far to say like I, Reports say this movie was supposed to be rated R. Yeah. You can tell it was supposed to be rated R. Like I didn't even sh- notice till like halfway through where she sniped a dude's head and no blood came off. And no I'm blood, like not even a mark. No. Like, they just played the sound and the dude fell over. Which yeah. is so like And there's cheesy. just no energy to the movie. Mm-hmm. Like it's just like no one gave a fuck to be there. Like yeah. genuinely, like I just cause that opening scene with Roland saving Tiny Tina. I was like, this is not good. Also, too, the uh, where Lilith meets Craig for the first time and they fight each other. Mm-hmm. I thought that was the cheesiest fight ever. Yeah, because it wasn't like, filmed she, good. Yeah, she they was were trying. Him. Yeah, they were yeah, trying. They were trying. Like it's not. It, this goes fault, nothing right? against the actors. Yeah, like they is, all try. Even Kevin Hart tried his role. Yeah, like he wasn't his typical funny Kevin Hart. Like he genuinely tried to be Roland. Yeah. So. Like, this isn't the actors, but, like, Lilith is sitting here, and she hasn't missed a shot in this film. And she's point-blank range with a handgun. And she's missing. Creek. She's missing, but she the only time she ever hits her shots is the mask that Krieg is yep. wearing. And he's just, like, literally... Also, like can we talk about how predictable the movie was? Yeah. It was... I knew she was the Iridium whatever. Mm-hmm. And for me, like, it was cool to see her psych up and stuff like that. Like, because I was sitting there, I'm like, why is she not using her siren abilities? Mm-hmm. And and that's another thing. Like, there was cool Easter eggs. Like, the masks were cool. Like, they even, like, Craig even had the pigeon one that you can have in the game and stuff like that. Like, I like the mask idea because, you know, you can switch out what your character you're oh, yeah. I thought that was cool. It's just, like, this game or this movie itself is just boring. It's boring. The action's uninspired. It looks cheap. It just doesn't look like anyone cared. And the humor, I didn't even really laugh. Like, I laughed here. Like, not even laugh. I smirked. You know what? I was going to say, the only good jokes there were were from Claptrop. But he had a lot of misses than hits. Yeah. I mean, and again, not Jack Black's fault. Totally the script. He probably walked into a recording booth, recorded the lines, and left. I mean, if if you give him another, like enough ammo to a person they're bound to hit something right? yeah so. and i mean it's funny because the hit was when he was like pouring all the bullets out of his ass oh yeah that yeah. one was funny and i'm trying to remember there was another line he said to lilith towards the end i feel like was he even in the last fight scene he was they was he? the whole thing oh yeah because he, he grabs the, yeah yeah yeah, yeah, grabs yeah, yeah. People by by uh by the junk and throw him into the pit yeah and he does a little also sense. atlas awful villain yeah. Who I mean, thank God they didn't use Handsome Jack. I'll just say that right now. Oh. I'm like <laughs> because I love Handsome Jack. Thank God they didn't use Handsome Jack. Because I, I genuinely think that would have been the worst fucking choice you could have ever done. So I'm glad that they went generic bad guy corporation dude instead of like Handsome Jack. So uh, Yeah, because this movie was boring. And if yeah. you if you used Handsome Jack and fuck that up. I'm also shout out to them. I don't even we didn't even stay to see if there was an after credit scene. We just got up and fucking left. Yeah. I'm going to look it up right now. Was there an after credit scene? Because if there's an after credit scene uh, setting up Handsome Jack, I'm going to be fucking pissed. Oh, is there one? Let's see. Let's see. Do you think there is one before I look? I don't think there was. Uh, of Handsome Jack? Just in general, uh, an ending post credit scene. Oh, I think there probably was. Okay, let's see. All right. Borderlands movie ending. <laughs> well, he's looking that up. Another critique of the film that I had is that they have this entire world that's filled with a bunch of guns, and I only really saw like three guns that were unique in this film. That was another critique that I had. Here like you saw the the assault rifles, which was yeah. cool, from the Atlas soldiers, but they didn't even shoot them. Yeah, I liked Marcus. 
Oh yeah, Mark. That was cool. cool. And Mad you know, Moxie. I liked how they did that. Yeah, it was funny. That, Again, like, just goes back to Easter eggs and stuff like yeah. that. Vault. Do you know how the movie should have started though? It should have started with him. Let me tell you a story. Yeah. I think that would have been great. The whole movie should have just taken place on Pandora, though. Yeah. The whole movie should have just taken place on Pandora. Anyways, is there a mid or post credit scene in Borderlands? Sort of. After the initial main credits play, we cut to a black screen and Claptrap appears on top of it, singing and dancing for what looks like to be a mid credit scene kicking off. Except the remaining closing credits, Crawl begins coming up from the bottom of the screen almost immediately and physically hits Claptrap, knocking him over on his side on top of the first credit line. He screams and protests that he's just giving the people what they want as the credits continue to push him up and off screen. That's it. So, shout out to them for not setting up Handsome Jack because this movie was not getting a sequel. Yeah, no. So, other than that, I'm going to give this movie a three out of ten. Oh, okay. I'm going to give it a three only because the actors tried and that one action scene was solid. Yeah. Other than that, no. What about you? I mean, it was just like, it's an F, so it's <laughs> like four or five. A four or five? Yeah. Uh, I think that's I think there's like movies who've done source material worse. But then again, like I'm not I would rather re I would rather watch Halo than this. Yeah. I would rather watch Halo. Because Halo, at least for the most part, you can be entertained by some of it. Which this is what we're uh, first off, let's rank Borderlands including the movie. Just mm. off the top of our head. So um I'm gonna go real fast. Number one, Borderlands two, fucking perfect. I love that game. Number two uh borderlands three uh i don't really like the story but i like a lot of the dlc number three telltales the walking or tales tales the borderlands <laughs> series yeah yeah dead. the walking dead so uh, up that. next uh the first borderlands pre-sequel the movie i have not played tiny tina's uh dungeon fucking spinoff whatever it is though yeah your turn so i would say number one borderlands two yeah um number two I think story-wise, Borderlands 1. Okay. But, like, mechanically and just, like, gameplay-wise, I think Borderlands 3 is right okay. there. Okay, and then so, Borderlands again. Yeah, vice versa with those top three. I think we're pretty okay. shape on that. And then the pre-sequel, I liked some of the little space yeah. gadgets. I mean, it was cool. It yeah. was gimmicky. And then, what was it? The Telltale? Yeah. Oh, wait. I would put the Telltale above that. Okay. I like, I like the story. The, at least the first season. Yeah. Right? I know that they did the second season yeah, for that. I, 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 really I didn't care for bother it. for it. But um, the first season of that, the pre-sequel, mm -hmm. and then what was it? Tiny Tina's. Tiny thing? Tina's yeah. Wonder Dungeon and or whatever. And then the movie. Okay. So Yeah, the movie's the worst thing. Go play Borderlands if you haven't. I highly recommend it. It's a really fun co-op game. They're making a fourth one. So ah. I imagine it's honestly going to be announced probably by the end of this year so people can wipe the stank off this movie. Um, with that said, uh, let's jump into... I'm like completely scattering. Bearing. Oh, oh we we're going to talk say. about video game movies. So... Phil, I'm going to mention a, a movie, and it's based on a video game. This goes from worst or best to worst on Rotten Tomatoes critic scores, okay? Oh. So the first one I mentioned is going to be the highest critic score for a video game, mm -hmm. all the way down to the worst. You're going to tell me if you've seen it. If you have, is it better or worse than Borderlands, okay? Okay. Or would you rather watch it than Borderlands? So Werewolves Within, I don't think you've seen this one. No, I have not. It's a really good movie. I like it. This is the number one at an 86%. Really? Yeah, what it's a good movie. It? It's based off Werewolves Within. It's an indie game. Oh. They made it. They made a movie for it. It's really oh, cool. I never heard of that. You should watch it. It's really funny. Okay. So I can't do that. Yeah. But I would rather right. watch that over Borderlands. Angry Birds movie two at a seventy-two percent. This is the second really? highest Rotten Tomatoes one. Yeah. That's crazy. You know what though? I'll watch that over. Okay. Borderlands. Pokemon De Detective Pikachu sixty-eight oh. percent. That should be way higher. Yeah. That should be higher. That should be better than Angry Birds. I kidding? that. Yeah, I agree. So you'd watch it over it? Yeah. Sonic like the Hedgehog 2, 68%. That's fucking baffling to me. That's a 68 too. Yeah. I would uh, watch I it. I watched part of that on a plane ride. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah. Uh, Gran Turismo based on a true story. This movie was actually really good. I haven't watched it. It's good. I liked it. Yeah. I would, would you watch it and set over Borderlands? Yeah, I think it would probably be more All right. entertaining. Sonic the Hedgehog, the first one. I like the first one. They Me actually, too. They listened to the yeah. criticism about Sonic and changed it. And when does a studio ever do that? Yeah. Super Mario Bros. Oh, I thought that was cute. Okay. I'm just going to literally say one. Yeah. Mortal, Com Mortal Kombat, the newer one. The newer one? Yeah, I would rather watch that. Tomb Please. Raider, the newer one. I haven't watched that. Oh, okay. Rampage. It's that. good. I liked it. Rampage. With Dwayne Johnson, the monkey. Oh. 
You know what? I remember we watched that together. Yeah, we did. Yeah. I'd watch that instead. Yeah, watch that. Mortal Kombat, the original. Oh, the original? Yeah. Hell yeah. Angry Birds, the movie. I don't know. I think I would probably watch Borderlands. I don't care for Angry Birds. It's a mobile game. It's Monster like the Hunter. Movie. The Monster Hunter movie. The Monster Hunter I never movie? saw this. Oh, did, I did. Is it good? I liked it. I, fuck, I heard it's awful. <laughs> but I, I'm a sucker for those kind of movies. What's her name? Milo? Yeah, Mila jo- Jovovich. M- yeah. Mila? Yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah. I mean, I watched okay. all the Resident Evil films. So. Uncharted the movie. Uncharted? I watched that. I would sadly watch that instead but i do not think it's it's entertaining uh any of the resident evil movies with mila jovovich i would watch those over yeah as bad as they get yeah they're still entertaining they're just not source material like prince of persia with jake gyllenhaal i would rather rewatch that i haven't watched that oh it's not good but it's enjoyable for what it is yeah it's like a bad kind of enjoyable yeah Okay. Uh, Five Nights at Freddy's. This one is fun. I would rather rewatch Five Nights at yeah, Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's wasn't that bad. Silent Hill. Silent Hill. I, um, either of them. Either of them. Yeah, I would watch those. Resident Evil. Welcome to Raccoon City. This That's is the newest the most one. Recent one. Yeah. Dude, I rather watch Borderlands than that. I <sighs> hated that. I movie. hated that movie too. But I absolutely. Hated I think that. I would rather rewatch that. Genuinely, Warcraft the movie. I have no idea how this is at twenty nine percent. I actually really like this movie. You did? Yeah, I, I liked it. Netflix. How the fuck is the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raider at fucking 24%? That's crazy. That's insane. That movie deserves... She's re- like iconic for Bro, that Bro, I'm going to review right? that movie just so I can post my Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Need for Speed, I never saw, did you? I didn't care. No. Uh, Ratchet and Clank, the animated movie, I never saw, did you? No. Uh, Pokemon, the movies. The animated ones? Uh, yeah, should be way better. Oh, Dude, yeah. these are like 2019 and lower. But you also got to think like... At the time that those movies came out, it wasn't so much into like nerd culture. No, People that's true. Were super into like the early two thousands, like orange lens flare military movies yeah. or high octane like action. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Assassin's Creed. I think I would rather rewatch that than Borderlands, and that says a lot. Yeah, that movie was not good. No, it uh, wasn't. Doom with Dwayne Johnson. I love Doom. Do you seriously? I thought it was so oh. cheesy and fun. It's a fun movie. Fair enough. Max and you know Payne. what? It's oh. the only movie that I've seen Dwayne The Rock Johnson lose in. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I, I get so mad about any movie that I, he's in because I know that he's contractually like obligated to I not think it's lose. changed now, but yes, that's where I he was so. for a while. Like Any movie that I see with him, I'm like, oh, he wins. Okay. Uh, Max Payne. <laughs> Max Payne. That this was movie's with, awful. Um, Mark Wahlberg. This movie's Wahlberg. awful. I actually rather watch that. Yeah, that's kind of like my um, I think guilty I, pleasure. So I'm going to tell you, I will say yes with you on that, only because I haven't seen it in years, and I just want to rewatch it. Yeah. Hitman. I haven't watched that. Okay. It's solid. It's fine. Street Fighter, I've never seen. Have you? No. Wing Commander, I've never seen. No. Postal, I've never seen. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, oh, Borderlands is now to a ten percent, Phil. Wow, they did it. Yeah, double digits. Um, other than that, yeah, Borderlands is. I don't know these other games, and I don't really care to. So, let's talk about D twenty three, man. This is Disney's big event. We just came back from Comic Con. We did not go to D twenty three. We were too tired, and honestly, uh, I kind of fucked up because I thought D twenty three was going to be in a small ass uh, convention center. No, they put it in a convention center of 15,000 people. So everything leaked out. Um, So I got to see everything. Uh, So, Phil, I'm just going to kind of run down the news real fast and just kind of go through a discussion. Yeah, you know this stuff more than me. Yeah, and for the trailers that did come out, I'll just ask you, are you interested or are you not with it, Um, basically. And then I just wanted to pull up my channel for the uh, viewer questions. So let's go up there. Perfect. All right. So, I'm still scrolling. There was a lot going on yesterday. Okay. So, the panel kicks off with, um, let's see, Moana 2. Uh, did you like the first Moana? Yeah, I thought it was cute. So, they released a new trailer. Looks really good. Um, I actually think it looks a little bit better than the first one, personally, but we'll see if that actually works. Because the cool thing about Moana 2 was it was actually supposed to be a Disney Plus show. They looked at the footage, and they're like, this should be a movie. And they just made it oh, into a movie. So that's cool. Hopefully it's good. Dwayne Johnson also announced he's making a live action Monster Jam movie, which is a uh, a monster truck film. Oh. No other details. I don't care. 
Up next was Avatar 3. They did not show footage for it, but we got a title, and it's called Avatar Fire and Ash, and you see the A, the a symbol burning. So uh, okay. looks cool. Um, they showed off uh, some new concept art for it, and it looks like we're getting new Navi, and they're gray, and they wear like red stuff and things like that. So I'm imagining they're um, going to look have to deal with the the fire you know we dealt with yeah. what earth in the first movie water in the second movie fire in this movie i will say one thing i cannot publicly say this well i cannot publicly say what it's about i have the plot lines for three four and five of avatar i have That's... dude they like are fucking awesome they are so co- like each one gets better than the last four four is gonna be like mind-blowing like genuinely like i think people's jaws are gonna fucking hit the floor on that one that's crazy up next was pixar phil pixar. which we know how much i love pixar and toy story 5 got its first official logo it's obviously toy story with the five hanging off andrew stanton is going to come back and direct this he was one of the original writers of the first few films and he directed finding nemo and wally so oh. this is massive that he's going to be directing this movie yeah that's that's going to be good. Then. And what we have here is the first bit of concept art and what the movie is about. Now, before I tell you what the movie is about, you know how big of a Toy Story fan I am. Mm-hmm. What do you think this movie is going to be about? It's going to be about Andy's kid. No. Really? No. I'm actually, I don't know if he shows up or anything, but the film is about the toys going up against electronics. Oh, uh, So, so like, iPad kids. The oh, concept okay. art is literally them looking. See? Oh, wow. So that's that's the concept art. And it looks like Slinky, Rex, Ham, Bullseye, Woody, Jesse, Buzz, and Forky will all be the main characters. So interesting. The, mil- the villains of the story will be an army of 50 Buzz Lightyears who are stuck in malfunctioning play mode and won't stop. Oh, okay. Sorry, I'm stretching. No, you're good. I was legs. like, what the fuck am I touching? Um, so overall, as a fan of Toy Story, as a diehard fan... I'm still nervous about this movie, but I do like the idea because that is very realistic to what kids play. Kids play more with iPads and cell phones and stuff like that than they do toys. Up next, they also announced a new Pixar film. Are you excited for Toy Story 5? Do you like that idea? Yeah, I think it's good. Me too. New Pixar film announced called Hoppers, which follows a girl who switches brains with a beaver to learn more about the secrets of beavers. Oh. Are you interested in this? I mean, it's kind of, yeah. It's kind of like one of those fun films, you know, like open season yeah, or something yeah. like that. Maybe it'll be good. It's Pixar. Yeah. So, and the last thing they announced during Pixar is The Incredibles 3. That's right. No other details other than Brad Bird, the original creator, is coming back. I'm excited. You? Yeah, I think I'll be good. All right. Up next, uh, Disney Animation took the floor. They talked about Zootopia 2, showed off a clip. They didn't show it to the public. Zootopia 2 is an awesome movie. Or Zootopia is an awesome movie. Zootopia 2 I'm excited for. Have you seen Zootopia? Yes, I have. Actually. Are you excited for a sequel? I think this movie should have gotten a sequel earlier, but I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, that's, that's kind of how I feel, too. Okay. I think it will be a good film. Nice. Next up, they announced Frozen 3 and 4. Frozen 3 will come out in 2027, and 4 does not have a release date yet, but they said that originally they only concepted one film, but as they were developing it, they needed to split it into two. This will answer a lot of different questions from the first two films that didn't really make sense about, such as Elsa's powers and things like that. Where does it come from? Um... I'm not the biggest Frozen fan, but I know so many people are. So yeah. I'm not dying to see this, but I'm interested. You? Yeah, I'm not. I don't really have an interest. For okay. It. Frozen's kind of like a whatever for me. Fair enough. Next up, we have the Skeleton Crew's first trailer. Now, this is a brand new Star Wars series coming out in December. It's made by the guy who, uh, his name is John Watts. He directed the last three Spider-Man movies. Oh. This is proposed as Goonies in Space. I love the Goonies. The trailer was solid. Does that interest you, Phil? That does sound pretty good. Okay. Up next, they showed Andor. Uh, they just talked about Andor Season 2, mostly saying Krennic's coming back. Uh, Saw Gerrera is going to be in it. That's about it. Um, they showed a trailer, but I didn't watch it uh, because it, it leaked, and I just didn't care to. I'll just wait and see the show. Uh, did you? Are you a fan of Andor? Did you watch I the first season? It, did you like yeah. Rogue One, though? Huh? Did you like Rogue One, though? Yeah. Rogue okay. One is like my favorite Star Wars film. That blows my mind that you've I not seen Andor. I loved it, dude. It was, it was so gritty. I know. I'm like so far away from the mic. Pull, pull it closer to I you know. if you need to. I don't Ooh, care. There we go. All right. So up next, we have the Mandalorian and Grogu movie. Oh. 2026. 
and a uh, trailer leaked out. I watched it. Um, looks awesome. Uh, I it actually. Oh no, the the picture fell. Oh well, oh, it's, we'll it fell it. up there. It doesn't matter. We'll uh, so it. Mandalorian and Grogu has its trailer, and it. I haven't been excited for this. I just think it's dumb to move them into movie format. Uh, but I can't deny that the trailer is not really good. Um, it's super quick. They just started filming. But it shows them, I think they're on Hoth. They're oh. fighting snow troopers. They're fighting Adats. Zeb from Star Wars Rebels appears in the trailer. Oh. And it overall looks cool. Oh, and his ship, the Razor Crest, is back. Oh, wow. So I'm interested, but that's all they really said. It comes out in 2026. I think it is dumb to have it come out there because it comes out two weeks after Avengers Doomsday. Oh. That is not smart. I would yeah. move that shit back. Uh, up next, they. Showed Captain America footage, the same stuff we saw at Comic Con. If you yeah. want our, go go watch our Comic Con coverage. Uh, Fantastic Four, same thing. They didn't really talk about anything. They did show, they had the cast, uh, Johnny suit. I don't think it's act- his actual suit though. Yeah. Next up, they showed Ironheart off, uh, which is that character from Wakanda Forever. The the lead trailer looked cool. I'm not sold on it though. Ironheart. Uh, yeah. The thing I'm more excited about is the last thing they showed, which is Daredevil Born Again. Which is, the trailer looks magnificent. You see the Punisher in it. You see Bullseye back in it. You see Muse in it. You see Kingpin. He has five different Daredevil suits in it. He has the black and red one, the yellow one, the red one, a brand new red one. Uh, White Tiger shows up. Um, There seems to be an altercation between him and Punisher before they decide to work together. Overall, this looks like season four of Mm -hmm. Daredevil. And that's what I wanted. Are you a fan of Daredevil? Are you excited oh, dude, for this series? I love the Netflix Daredevil Same. stuff. Same. Yeah, I think it's like the best kind of Marvel media they put out for like show wise. I agree. Up next, uh, the first look at Lilo and Stitch live action. Oh, really? Dude, this no is what way. Stitch looks like. Um, and it there he is. He looks really good. Oh, I'm goodness. I'm actually really surprised oh. by how good he looks. He um, looks so cute, dude. Yeah. What? So this was originally supposed to come out this year on Disney Plus. Oh wow! And there are a few things that really excite me about this. It's now coming next year in theaters. Oh, that is huge! I'm yeah. so 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 happy that it's they decided to put it in theaters. I love the director of this film. He um, made a small film called Marcel the Shell with shoes on. And uh, I when I reviewed the movie, he was very nice. He messaged me on Twitter. He said, "I loved your review. Thank you so much for reviewing it." Blah blah. blah. It's a very small movie. So ever since then, I've been championing this dude. You know, not a lot of directors go out of the way to message people personally, but mm-hmm. I really hope this movie makes it work uh, at yeah. the end of the day. So I love that. Uh, and then also we got trailers for the new Snow White live action movie and as well as Mufasa, The Lion King, which is a prequel to the um, the live action Lion King. Starting with Snow White, um, I haven't been too excited for this movie. I like the director. I like the cast, but I just I don't really care for anything else. And I watched that trailer and I felt magic. And it was shocking to me because I do not like the character of Snow White. I think she's boring. That's the one with like the seven dwarves. Yes, yes. And the dwarves look decent. Mm -hmm. Uh, Again, it's early. It still comes out next year. So there's a lot of time for visual effects. But Gal Gadot, Wonder Woman plays the evil queen. Rachel Zegler. Did you watch the last Hunger Games movie? The one that went in the theaters? No. Okay. Well, she's in that. She plays Snow White. Looks good. I'm surprised. It's directed by the guy who made Amazing Spider-Man 1 and 2. So oh, okay. it, visually, it looks stunning. So I'm in. Are you, would you go see this? I mean, that's fine. Okay. I think M- that's fine. Mufasa the Lion King. Uh, I didn't really like the live action Lion King. The more and more I think about it, the more disappointing I, it is to me. But this is directed by one of the best directors in Hollywood right now. He wrote, came to Disney with the idea, and it's telling the story of Mufasa and Scar when they were growing up. And it looks really heartbreaking. Oh. So I'm into this. What about you? Are you into seeing yeah, Mufasa? I think that'd be cool. I just hope they actually put emotions on the lions. But that's everything from D23, everybody. That is everything. So with that said, we're going to jump into your viewer questions, and then we're going to sign off and head out for the day. First off, did you get to see the Last of Us teaser trailer, the 30-second thing? No, okay. for the new one? Yeah, so they released a teaser trailer. Uh, someone's asking us about it. I totally forgot it came out or else I would have made this the main topic personally. But um, I'll, I'll give my thoughts. It's 30 seconds, oh, super quick. 
It's very quick. I think I might have seen something of it. Okay. Or I think I seen something. Cause okay. It was like super quick. It's thirty seconds. It, it, it has like the scene where they're in like the ballroom area. Yes. Right? Yes. And the lights, yes. And you kind of see jewel mm-hmm. aged. Yeah. So I've seen it. Okay. So thirty seconds. You get a quick look at Jeffrey Wright. You get a quick look at uh, Abby. You get a quick look at and Abby's under the fence with like the the clickers attacking. Mm-hmm. Um. But the the whole thing is Joel talking with Catherine O'Hara who's playing a new character. You see the Sephirites too, mm-hmm. which I thought was cool. Here's my thing. They're trying, I'm not going to get into spoilers, but they're showing Joel talking to someone. Does not look like they're in the same room. I think that is a misdirect. I'll leave it at that. that. Hmm. Uh, thoughts on the Disney showcase last night. Thoughts on what I just said that Disney announced. Overall, cool. Yeah. yeah. I like I, cool. I liked it overall. Yeah. Um, who do you think is the best antihero and why? Ooh. Do you have one for that? Would it be Punisher? I think I. I feel like Punisher is much more of like a. Um, yeah, I, I guess I would have to go. Yeah, with I mean Punisher. he's an antihero. Yeah. Um, would you count Deadpool? Is he an antihero? He. It, it's hard with Deadpool because he's technically a mercenary, and they had him be a villain yeah. in some of the stuff in some of the comics as well. So it's been very recent that he's more of an antihero than like a mercenary yeah. with who just gets paid more and doesn't care if they're good or evil. Yeah. You know? I, yeah. I mean, I would say Deadpool, uh, Punisher, Magneto. Magneto. He's, I think, the perfect definition of one because he's someone that not everyone likes, but he does mean well. So yeah, That is true. Um, Next thing. I just sat through 40 minutes of fucking ads and trailers before Deadpool and Wolverine. Are we going to get to a point when cinema goers will start complaining? We already do. Yeah, no. <laughs> I I forgot what movie that we went to go see. I think it might have been at like AMC. Probably. Or like I mean, dude, fucking before Borderlands, there's t- 30 minutes of previews. Yeah, it was insane how long. Like, I think it was, uh, I went to go see Long Legs with my brother. Okay. At like a Harkins theater. And dude, like Harkins had like three separate ads for themselves. It's like, why? But I, I still don't think Harkins is as bad as AMC. AMC, they just... They kind of just circle jerk themselves. Oh, this is Dolby Cinema. D- get our A list pass. Oh, this oh, is yeah. black. This is surround sound. You're in the best seating ever. Yeah, cinema experience. Super cinema experience. <laughs> and you're like, all right, dude, thank you. Can I watch my Frozen movie, please? Yeah, please <laughs> fucking give me the movie. I want to watch Angry Birds too. <laughs> right. Um, that God, man, it just blows my fucking no, it, mind. It blows my, fucking I think mind. it just, it's a byproduct of like now with everything being so subscription based mm-hmm. and they're, they're trying to push the boundaries of what they can really get out of like consumers. Right. Yep. So like now Amazon, it was just pay for your subscription or whatever. And you get no ads. Now it's, that's like the baseline and you get like two minute ads or whatever yeah. and you can pay the Uber subscription and it's like Would I you pay like, a premium to go to the movies and not get ads? I don't know. I think like if you're a Stubbs member or something like that, they could charge like five bucks more, but they have like Stubbs exclusive showings where like prices at like the counter are cheaper because they upcharge the hell out of candy. Yeah. So Well that's they, how they that's how they get their money back. Yeah. So, so. Like, if I was, like, AMC, if I were to do something like that, I would do, like, Stubbs exclusive viewings at, like, the Dolby Cinemas, or, the, like, the Dolby or Cinema they, rooms. Like, literally just cut out your AMC shit. Yeah. Just have the one ad, have the one fucking ad, maybe two, maybe two, and be done. Be fucking done with it. Um, Last question, Phil. Yeah. If you could have any animal as a pet, what would you take? And it can be anything. It, it won't kill you. It won't hurt you. Anything like that. A bear. A bear, any sort of sort of bear. I think I like black bears. Black bears are okay. kind of cool. Have you I ever like seen that. a sun bear? Yeah. Those are kind of goofy. Yeah. Uh, I would choose a panda bear. A panda bear? Yeah, That's these fair. are fun. They're, they're silly to watch. So, But guys, that is the End of the Geek First podcast. We are back. We're back. Uh, yeah, so catch us uh, every Thursday at 5 a.m. audio, 5 p.m. I think is when I post the video. Catch out all the shorts, all the cutouts, and anything cool. Uh, but Phil, anything else you have to say before we get going? Um, 
just be great and remember when life ever puts you down, just keep your head up and keep going forward. That's exactly. all you can do. Exactly. So next week, guys, we're going to be talking um, uh, with According to Seth. I think Phil's going to try and join us. Hopefully we can get the mics working and everything. Yeah. I think um, and we're going to be talking about Alien Romulus. Um, Seth is a big fan of Alien, so we're going to talk about it. Have you seen the Alien movies? Yes, I have. Okay. So we can talk about it, right? Yes. Are you? Your assignment, if you come next week... Is you have to try and see the movie before we record Saturday. It comes out yeah, Thursday night. Because I think I've seen Prometheus. I've seen Covenant. I've seen one and two. Obviously. That's fine. And that's fine. This this I one. I think I even saw. Is there a third Alien? There's a third and a yeah, fourth. Watched, and Alien vs. Predator and all that. Alien 3. I okay, that's cool. So, far as I got. so we're all set. We're going to talk a lot about that franchise and, of course, the new film. Phil, if you can, try and see it before we record Saturday. So, But okay. other than that, guys, thank you so much. And stay classy, stay geeky, and have fun.